What if I told you that Pele, the single most iconic player of our beautiful game, teamed up with Sylvester Stallone, England captain Bobby Moore, and Ipswich Town to take on the Third Reich in a game of football? Yep, this was, in fact, an actual movie that was produced in the 80s. And it's been largely forgotten about, and honestly for good reason, until now. Meet Corporal Luis Fernandez, a soldier from Trinidad who's stuck in a German prisoner of war camp and is being scouted by Captain John Colby, played by Michael Caine, to play for his POW ally football team against the Germans in a match to prove supremacy. Where'd you learn to do that? When I was a boy. In Trinidad. On the streets with the oranges. Yeah, let's forgive the man for not having the greatest acting skills. But then we have Hatch, an American who wanted to fight the Germans so badly that he went over the border and enlisted in the Canadian Armed Forces. He knows nothing about the game, and it shows. Hey, what kind of game is this? For old ladies and fairies? I quit. Trust me, the dialogue is definitely not this movie's strong suit. But basically, the Allies are stuck in a German POW camp and mostly play football to pass the time. Organized by none other than former West Ham midfielder John Colby. Then the leader of the camp, Major Carl von Steiner, notices them playing football and challenges them to a match. Michael Caine is then tasked with putting together a team of war prisoners, which includes the already mentioned Corporal Luis Fernandez, Bobby Moore, Osvaldo Arviles, Mike Summerby, and almost the entire Ipswich football team. Why? Well, that's a question you'll be asking yourself a lot in this video. Apparently, Ipswich manager Bobby Robson was friends with the producer of the movie, and all he had to do was mention to the players that they would have a chance to play with the then-retired 40-year-old Pele. And these weren't just any regular players. Ipswich had just come off a UEFA Cup title, but these guys jumped like little kids at the opportunity to be in the GOAT's presence. And as to why John Huston, director of movies like The Maltese Falcon in Chinatown, had any interest making a movie about football, a sport that he didn't have a clue about, is to anyone's guess. Allegedly, the script came across his lap at a time where he was in a huge gambling debt, and he saw it as an opportunity to pay it off which would explain why certain decisions were made on the set. Like how, apparently, the production team originally wanted to cast Pele as the goalkeeper. Imagine casting three-time World Cup winner and highest goal scorer of all time and thinking, yeah, why don't we put that guy in goal? Oh, and, and trust me, this is just where the oddities of this movie begin. Sylvester Stallone's character, Hatch, then decides he wants to be a part of the team, since it will give him a chance to escape the prison. But he's utter garbage at football, and doesn't have what it takes to be on the side. And much like in the movie, Stallone's football ability in real life was completely lacking, despite even having the coaching advice from England's 1966 World Cup winning goalkeeper Gordon Banks, his technique was, I guess you could say, interesting? I mean, this man's perception of the sport of football was so divorced from reality that on one of the days they were filming, he actually made a bet with Pele that for a thousand dollars, he could save at least half of the penalties in a shootout. After watching the ball fly by him into the net a few times, he finally got a hand to the ball and suffered a broken finger from the power of the shot. And that's not the only broken bone he received during the filming of this movie. He ended up with multiple broken ribs, a dislocated shoulder, and hematomas on both hips from all the diving he had to do as goalkeeper for the Allies. Stallone went into the movie thinking, and I quote, It's soccer. What's the big deal? It's easy. And despite coming off an Oscar-winning Rocky performance, much of the cast didn't have much respect for his antics. He reportedly got into a fight with the director because he wanted to score the winning goal against the Germans. As a goalie. Unsurprisingly, Pele, Bobby Moore, and much of the rest of the cast had to inform him that this was not a very realistic ending for the film. 
Hatch then escapes the prison camp, but then decides to get recaptured to inform his friends of an escape plan, but is put into solitary confinement and can't play with the team now. So obviously, there's only one thing to do. Michael Caine's character breaks the arm of the other goalkeeper in order to convince the German commander that he needs Stallone to play for the team. And now they're set to play against the enemy forces in Paris, where they've planned to escape through a sewer line in the dressing room at halftime. Captain Colby then tries to give some tactical advice. Which means that as that goon is, Colby, after giving me ball, here I do this, 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 go. Easy. Pele, Bobby Moore, and Alfred, I mean Michael Caine, Sylvester Stallone, and Ipswich's star players line up to face the evil Germans. This German side was actually played by Hungarian first team division MTK Budapest in real life. Besides Michael Caine and Sylvester Stallone, the entire field was filled with professional footballers. And this was apparent as Michael Caine was reportedly so bad compared to everyone else that in most of the scenes they ended up having to use Ipswich midfielder Kevin Beattie to play his legs. But the coolest part of this movie is definitely the match. And to make it even more fascinating, it's the way that they filmed it. Originally, the production team wanted to choreograph each individual scene, but Pele and many of the other professionals rejected this idea, saying it wouldn't look believable. In order to make it as realistic as possible, the two teams actually just played a real match of football, and then the editors took scenes afterwards and cut them together. They set up multiple camera angles around the field, as well as strapping a camera to the side of a World War II motorcycle to film the close-up action shots of the match. Just imagine all the exhaust fumes that came out of that motorcycle. Now, the game starts, and what could go wrong by putting some random American in goal? First, a terrible play from a corner, and he concedes. Then they give away a penalty, and it's an interesting attempt, I guess, to save the penalty, but he gets scored on again. And again. And again. As a result, the Allies fire themselves down by four goals, and Pele tries his best, but the dirty Nazis injure him so badly he can't play on. The Allies get one back, but they're down 4-1 at halftime, and a man down. Hopeless, to say the least, but it doesn't matter. Their plan was to escape through the sewers at halftime anyways, right? Well, apparently Pele has a change of heart and decides that even though they're three goals down at half and he's injured, they can still maybe win this thing? So, as one does in such a situation, when confronted with the possibility of finally escaping a Nazi POW camp or trying to come back in a somewhat meaningless game of football, of course, you choose the football. They take the field, and Osvaldo Arvillez scores right away, and then they get another one back. Oh, and look, Pele comes back on with broken ribs. And how else could it end but with Pele scoring a bicycle kick to tie the game 4-4 while he's injured? Apparently on set during the filming of this goal, the whole cast, including the professional players, thought it was going to take a bunch of takes to get it right. But then on the first take, Pele hits a perfect bicycle kick into the top right corner, but nobody was filming. The second attempt was then somehow incredibly saved by the Hungarian goalkeeper, and the third shot was the one you see now. At 40 years old, Pele was still that good. The game then ends, and in the commotion of the fans rushing the field, the team of course escapes. Now while this might not be the greatest film in terms of acting, dialogue, or plot, I have to say that the on-field moments were actually quite captivating and genuinely fun to watch. But there you have it. That's the time Pele and Sylvester Stallone took on the Nazis in a game of football. <laughs>